Hey guys and welcome back to my cooking channel Katie Cooks Easy Recipes and today I'm going to be talking you through the most popular recipe on my website which is the best cottage pie. It's a really grown up cottage pie, it uses lots of lovely rich flavours. Before we begin don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more easy home cooked recipes. But for now let's run through the ingredients list. So you've got about 500 grams of good quality beef mince. The higher fat content you can get, the more flavour you're going to get into your cottage pie. A simple mirepoix, mirepoix, diced celery, carrot and onion. And then these are my aromatics that I'm going to put in. Bay leaf, tomato puree, rosemary. And if you want to make it really, really super rich, grown up, this is optional. There's a tablespoon of marmite. You can leave that out if you want. Then we've got our potatoes ready for boiling to make a lovely creamy mash. We're going to use some stock, that's a Norse stock cube. Then we've got some olive oil. We've got some plain flour that's going to thicken up our gravy really, really lovely. Worcester sauce. Some frozen peas. And then we're going to go in with a really nice glug of lovely red wine. You can save the rest of the bottle to drink with your delicious cottage pie. That's up to you. And there you go. So the full ingredients list detailed will be in the caption for this video. So let's begin with the cooking. We're going to get a cold big pan of water on to boil with some salt in it. Always put your potatoes in the cold water because if you put them into boiling water they're going to go soft on the outside but they're still going to be firm in the middle which means you're going to end up with lumpy mash which is not the end of the world with cottage pie because you're going to go crispy and everything anyway so you won't notice the lumps but in general that's a great tip. Right now while the potatoes are coming up to boil we're going to get started on the cottage pie filling. So I've got my lovely beef mince there, I heated up some oil. If you can get your pan onto a medium to high heat, the more colour you get on that beef mince, the more flavour again you're going to get into your pie. So we, I'm browning this off and what I like to do is season the meat as it's browning. So I'm just seasoning it with not too much but a little bit of salt and pepper. Once you've seasoned it, you're just going to keep it cooking. And we don't want to cook it all the way through completely. Once it's pretty much cooked, just, just slightly under, we can then remove it from the pan because obviously we're going to pop it in the oven later on as well so it's going to continue to cook. So remove that now almost cooked beef from your pan. And then what you want to do, if there's excess oil, just pour it into a little cup and keep it to one side because you might need it later, but just leave yourself with about a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half of that fat in the pan. And then you're going to go in with your mirepoix, which is a posh word for diced carrots, celery and onion. And that's going to form the base of our lovely, delicious sauce. So you're going to get that moving all around. And if your pan starts to get too dry, you can either add in a little bit more of that uh, cooking oil that you remove from the pan. Or if you're trying to cut down the calories slightly, not that it's going to make a big difference, you can always just add plain water. Um, just so that all the onions and bits and pieces don't stick to the pan and burn and give the sauce a bitter flavour. So with any sauce cooking, the longer you can leave that the base of your sauce, so these vegetables cooking and really, really sweating down, the more flavour you're going to get into your gravy or sauce. So this will take about 10 minutes to get to this point, but if you can do it for longer, great. Then I'm going to go in with my chopped rosemary and a bit of salt and pepper. So I finally chopped the rosemary. You can throw the sprigs in whole, but um, I find that sometimes you lose whole little stalks of it and you can bite down on that in your shepherd's pie and it's not always pleasant. It can be a little bit overpowering and you've got to kind of pick it out your teeth. So I finally diced mine. And then in with the tomato puree. Now make sure your pan's got some liquid in it, i.e. Your, a little bit more of that cooking fat um, or butter and then you're going to go in with your flour. If you put that into a dry pan it's just going to completely stick to the bottom so you want to make sure there is some kind of, still some kind of fat um, in there so that it, you can cook it off. So we're going to move the flour all around to cook it off and make sure that there's no raw flour in there because that does taste a little bit funky. Add your beef mince back in and give it all a good stir. Then you're going to go in with your lovely glass of red wine and your bay leaves will go in there as well. And what you can see here is the sauce has already got a lovely thick base. That's what the plain flour's done. The wine has cooked out a little bit so it won't have that really harsh red wine taste. And then you can go in with about 500 mils of beef stock. I just added the water and then the stock cube. It makes no difference. 
And if you're going to use it, pop your Marmite in at this point as well, which I was obviously having trouble with it because it's so sticky. So but then I finally worked out to get a smaller spoon and scrape the remainder of that out of the tablespoon. Give everything a good mix around. Don't forget, like I almost did, to add your Worcester sauce in. And then just let that simmer away on a medium heat. It will take around about 20 to 30 minutes. Keep an eye on it, stir it every now and again. And then you're gonna get this delicious, rich, beautiful cottage pie filling. It looks absolutely delicious. And our potatoes are boiling away and they should be nearly done. So, next up, make sure that you remove your bay leaves. And if you're using whole rosemary sprigs, take them out now. Give that a stir. And we're actually going to let this cool down before we top it with the mash because that's one way you can stop your mash from sinking into the sauce. I don't know if anyone has any issues with that. It's taken me a long, long time to learn how to, a few little tips of how to stop the mash sinking in. So we're going to put that into our oven ready pie dish and then just leave that to one side and let the beef mince filling just cool down slightly and thicken up before we put our mash in. While that's cooling down, we'll check on our potatoes. And as you can see, they're pretty much falling apart now. What you want to look for when you're making a really creamy mashed potato, a really smooth mashed potato, is that they just, they're pretty much falling apart. If anything, if I'm being honest, these probably could have done with maybe another three minutes of cooking. Uh, but it's not the end of the world because it's going on to a cottage pie. But if I was just serving that as just plain mash on the side of something, I would be a little bit disappointed. Right, so, can't recommend enough a potato ricer. It's changed my mashed potato game completely. So drain your potatoes, let them steam for a minute, and then just start putting them through your potato ricer. It really does help with the uh, smoothness of your mash. Next up, you want real flavor into your mash, we're gonna add lots of butter. Now, it's entirely up to you how much butter you wanna use if you're trying to be a little bit healthier but the more butter you put in there the more delicious it will taste i had a splash of milk to help me mix it all around if you want to make luxury mash use double cream instead of milk and it is just insane add a splash of um sorry add a grind of salt and i found that using a silicone spatula the first one was a bit big so i moved on to this red one a silicone spatula really does help again to smooth it out because we want our shepherd's uh, cottage pie to be a bit bougie, I'm actually going to add in a tablespoon of horseradish to my mash. It just gives it a little bit more of a bite and another flavour dimension. And as you can see there, those little lumps are actually horseradish. But as you can see, it's a really, really nice mash ready to go onto our cottage pie filling. Oh, and I always have a little spoonful, a little taste of the mash and the filling together to see how delicious it's going to taste. And it was yummy. Another tip I think from Jamie Oliver was lay your peas on top of your mixture. That again adds as, uh, acts as a little barrier for you to stop your mash falling through. It's just something else to help it. So our mixture's cooled. We've added our frozen peas and now we're going to go on with our mash. Just make sure that you use a fork to get lots of lovely crevices and nooks and crannies because they're the bits that, they're the favourite bits. Everyone's favourite bits are ones, bits that go really, really, really crispy and crunchy in the oven. So just give that all a fluff up. Then I like to add just a little crack more salt. Again, you don't have to. A crack more salt on top of it. And that's going into our oven that's been preheated to about 190 degrees. That's going to go in there for about 40 minutes. And then you've got this delicious cottage pie. And I should have explained, I always leave a border around my mash because I just love the way the gravy oozes out and spills out and the mash soaks all that flavouring around the edges. So yeah, I always leave a little bit of a gap when I put my mashed potato on. Now, as you can see, it's dishing up time. It's not always, it's full to the brim, this cottage pie. So yes, it did spill. I put my bowl underneath it. It did spill over the edge though. And I didn't even want any veg with this cottage pie. I just wanted to eat it straight out of the bowl with a spoon and just really, really enjoy this winter warmer. Thank you for tuning in and watching this cooking video today. Hopefully you came across this because you were on my website and you wanted to try to cook the best cottage pie recipe ever. Let me know what you think. Do give it a try and don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel so I can bring you lots more easy tips and tricks in 
the kitchen to help with your home cooking.